Let me tell you why you're here. You're here because you know something. What you know you can't explain, but you feel it. You felt it your entire life. That's Randall, how are you, did? I'm all right. Have you noticed the uh, I put a candle on for you tonight? Oh, beautiful. Beautiful. That's very pretty. And I just did in your... No, what did I do? I just did something to your dog and it just yelped. I felt bad already. So we got a bad start. Yeah, he's got a sore ass now. <laughs> <laughs> All these gigglers in the background uh, here. Um, what's, what's been happening? Uh, still flying solo. That's probably why I put the candle on because it's a distinct... Oh, my wife. Yeah. I should have shaved. Distinct lack of uh, smell in my house. So <laughs> just wanted to get something nice. Okay. An aroma. Um. So Bitcoiners are quite um, toxic and irresponsible. Mm-hmm. So the, our guests tonight have somehow managed to get a child to buy beer. Um, <laughs> so let's start there, shall we? Um, we have, um, we've got Dan and Paul. Dan, yep. and Paul. Yep. I'm right there. Well, yes, yes. Which is help, but they've helpfully called themselves Dan and Paul because previously we knew them as um, Big Kiwi and John. <laughs> <laughs> so, in fact, firstly, let's just tell that story, and then we'll get onto the beer. <laughs> Welcome, guys. Yeah, cheers, cheers for having us. Thank on. you. Yeah, so we're um, yeah, we're two two parts or uh, two thirds of Bit Kiwi. Um, the other Dan couldn't be here, so yeah, Bit Kiwi, John, Bit, Bit Kiwi and John becomes Paul, Dan, and Dan. Yeah, <laughs> obviously, it's the easiest so, connection. It makes total sense. So our lack of preparation is really, really helping yeah, us here, yeah, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. You weren't um, to know on the John thing. So hang on to you. So what's the, the story with the John? Is that just a, a Twitter and on that you've decided just to blow this evening or what's happening? Well, not anymore. No. <laughs> <laughs> My middle name's John. I live on Chatsworth Road. So I think I'm down as John Chatsworth. Perfect. Um, Perfect. Fucking docs. Oh, yeah, true. Yeah. Be, be, <laughs> welcome back That's to that. that, back to that. So, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Um, did that for work purposes so I could just sort of go about work without being too obvious, and yeah, it's morphed into where we are now. Yeah. But I'm Dan, right? <laughs> Got it. Okay, and you're in New Zealand. Whereabouts in New Zealand are you? We're in, um, well, right now we're in Parapara Umu, which is uh, about 30 minutes north of uh, Wellington. So we're North Wellington region. region, born and bred, all three of us. Where is it? I uh, brought three? up an upper hut, which has got a great reputation in New Zealand. What's what's it and, called? Uh, uh, so we're right now we're in Parapara Umu. That is the correct Maori pre- uh, pronunciation. Gesundheit. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. All right. <laughs> okay. Um, and um, you're at nine o'clock, right? Ish. Yeah. Yeah. That's right. Yeah. Okay. On a we'll, school we'll, night. I'll we'll try not to ruin your school night. But um, so <laughs> you boys know each other. Through a meetup, or you knew each other before a meetup? Uh, we actually grew up together. So the other Dan and I went to kindergarten together. Um, so we've been friends for our whole lives and uh, met this Dan when I was about 16. Yes. Um, and we've been friends since then. So you kind of grew up in the hometown childhood friends, really. Wow. And who got who in, or what, what was it, the other one? Yeah, it was the other one. So yeah, he was. Uh, he was he was shit coining away and telling us how great it was. And so we were like, well, we better check this out. There might be some money to be made. And then uh I guess within a couple of months of us sort of getting into it and learning and reading about it, uh, we all sort of orange pilled each other together and became maximalists in a few months and left really? the shit coining behind. And off we went. Yeah. So and, how long uh, how long ago was this? Oh, three or four years ago. Okay, right. Yeah, and um, and then we just got deeper and deeper in the rabbit hole, and then it just started consuming, and then it was like, okay, life has changed now. We need to be involved in this somehow. We need to be doing something. Where are the other bit pointers? And that's where we started. Just that's want to it. say, I never shit coined at all. Uh, oh, nice. <laughs> Nothing. Not not not, not a single thing. No, no, not a single. Wow. Yeah. Well, you I... you're probably in the same boat as me with hats. Then, even though I did shit coin for a very brief period, at much too. Uh, no, no, I, I, I'm happy uh, for you to make your own mistakes. I know, I know, I know, I know. But yeah, like, as I've said in previous pods, like having someone who is a maxi kind of really introduce you to that idea of, I don't want to say cryptocurrency, but, you know, Bitcoin, and then kind of guiding you, it really makes a difference. 
rather than sort of just no, jumping I mean, in I, and having a go. When I started it. looking to it, I ended up down so many rabbit holes. I thought this is confusing enough and there's enough to learn here. There's no way I can understand the shit coins. Mm. <laughs> they make no sense. <laughs> that, that's it. It's about this kind of the same as I felt about economics at university. Yeah. Yeah. No, I can't yeah. understand this. Doesn't make any sense. I just thought it was stupid. Turns out it was shit. Um, so can I call you out yeah. right now? Oh. Hats just grabbed a pen. Are you sure? sure? And on his left hand, he wrote Dan on the right hand side and Paul <laughs> on the left, just to make sure he gets it right. Yeah, because I, I I don't want to disrespect the guys. So like, yeah, they call me out. I'm now devastated. <laughs> um, it's a mark of a professional, isn't it? Oh yeah. Thank you. Maybe. Thank you. I'll tat- I'm going to tattoo. I'm going to keep that forever now. And I actually spelt it damn. <laughs> 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 um, anyway. Um, so what exactly you're, you're running a meetup and that meetup is expanding. Is that what's, and it's kind of going around New Zealand, right? Yeah. Well, we, so, so we started looking around cause we, we sort of wanted to do something in Bitcoin. We didn't really know what it was, but we know what we wanted to do it together. And we started looking around for other Bitcoiners and we showed up at a cryptocurrency meetup that gets held in Wellington. And that was just an absolute shit show, as you can imagine. Um, and we just we could we couldn't really deal with that. We got even got mocked slightly for being Bitcoin maximalists. Really? Um, yeah, and and, and th- that was fairly earlyish in our journey. And you know, we weren't really com- confident debaters and whatnot. So we left that behind. Um, and then we sort of threw around some ideas about maybe we could see who's out there. And then we got invited to a meetup up in Auckland by um Tip NZ and James Vigiano up there. And so we were like, well, there's nothing else anywhere, so let's just go. So we flew up to Auckland. Um, and went to this meetup in Auckland that they just just was a one-off thing where she'd sort of private message people. And there was about 20 or 30 people there just talking Bitcoin. It was just amazing. Like first meetup, it was just, you know, we found somebody to really talk to. And so we had a great time. And then we were on a bit of a high after that. And we we didn't they didn't appear to have any plans to do anything regularly. It was a bit of a travel up there. So we're like, well, why don't we just do it? Let's just start it. So we came up with BitKiwi, um, put the word out there a bit. And we had twenty odd at the first one, um, and yeah, and we just we- sort of so that was Wellington, or where would you do that one? Yes. Yeah, Wellington, yeah. yeah. And um, and we in the Auckland meetup, we become friends with a few people around the country, and we kept in touch. Um, and there's a great Bitcoiner in Christchurch, Kiwi Lamb, and we were sort of talking to him about ideas of what we could do at the meetup. So it wasn't just people sitting around; maybe something else we could do. Um, and we just threw the idea around out there of, well, we can't find a bar or anyone that's going to accept Bitcoin in Wellington. So what if we somehow try and make a halfway house and make it happen? Um, and so we came up with this little basic, simple concept that we thought we could start with this maybe and then try and orange pill the bar and move to something proper later. And uh, Kiwiland's a legendary developer and he just spun it up, just built it um, exactly as we'd sort of described and it worked. And we were just like, this is cool. So we put that up. Um, Dan, the other bit key we remember, he uh, he's an AV, in the AV industry. So he got hold of some a screen and a truss to hold it up. And we just fired it up at the meetup. Um, and it was quite a hit. People loved it. It was a bit of a novelty. Bitcoin is showing up. And that was a lot of them. That was their first meetup. Getting to use Lightning to actually do something in Wellington. Um, and they loved it. And so after that, we were like, well, we might just keep this going. It's a bit of a novelty. People like it. So we've we've done that at the meetups and we've slowly improved it. Um, and yeah, we did we did three in Wellington and then we went to Christchurch a couple of months ago and had one there. Um, and there's a bit of a bit of a group of Bitcoiners in Christchurch and that was a really awesome time actually. We sort of tied in a few other things because we were traveling. Um, we went out for we had a dinner afterwards. There's a restaurant in Christchurch that does accept Bitcoin. Um, Khmer right. restaurant, shout out to them, Cambodian delicious uh so we we went there for dinner and got i think most of the meetup went out for dinner together afterwards uh, and then the next day we had simon collins down there the ceo of um stacker mining who spoke at bitcoin alive yep. um, and he invited us all to come on a tour of their mining facility the next day so we made a bit of a bitcoiners weekend out of it yeah right. um, and it was awesome and then we had another meetup after that back in wellington last month and um now we've got them organized for um, Wellington again in July and then Auckland in October and we're going to go to Queenstown in February and try and make that of a bit of a big one so we're right. kind of trying to ramp up the stuff that we do and sort of grow them into something a bit more than a meetup like a bit of an event um, there's a few little meetups popping up around New Zealand and we thought 
you know, hopefully that happens organically and we get them everywhere. And then maybe we can try and grow this into something that's quite quite fun and they all come together a bit into a bit of, a bit of an event. So, yeah, that's sort of try, where we're trying to head with it. So it sounds um, very similar to, to a bush bash. It really does. Or a, maybe a, a sheep shag. Oh. Hey. Oh. Hey. Oh. 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 You knew it was oh, no, the jokes never oh. end here, boys. Oh, listen, I'm Scottish. I, I get it, man. We had to, we had to live, live next door to the English. Um, <laughs> the... Um, <laughs> So hang on. So the, so the thing that you're describing before on the screen, basically this is the this is the tweet or video that you, sh- you share with us, right? And it's essentially just yes. like a TV of a screen with a mm. with, with you know it's an advertising thing on it. It's got like a QR code. There was a young girl there that was using it to. I assume it was my daughter. Okay, there um, you go. So they've all got one of the Satoshi, and I, I send them sats and things quite regularly, yep. so I get them up using it. So your young young girl buying beer in a bar. I mean, this is all sounding good, and um. And so what they what what actually happens though? So you're you're yes. somebody's then collecting cash and then going to the bar and paying the bar bill, or what's actually, or, or, yeah, or are yeah. you so starting a, to orange pill the bar yet, or what's happening there? Yeah, we've 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 made a few little runs at them. They don't seem that receptive, <laughs> but they're very accommodating. So we'll just okay. persist in this relationship for now. <laughs> um, but they um they uh so we've just got a static LN URL QR code for a set amount of sets yep. up on the screen. We've got that connected to a node in the background. Right. Um, That's so good. And yeah, so so they you know pay the amount, and then we've got our own little we joke our little shit coin with just a little uh, plastic tokens with um, a bit kiwi sticker on it, and you take that up to the bar, and then you can just get a drink. And so yeah, they're they're adding it to a tab that we're wow, paying. We got to do end, that. So that's, that's, that's great, right? That's so good. Such a good idea. Yeah. Yeah, it's kind of you know to the bar, it's just a standard situation. You know, they don't have any any risk or anything. And that's why they don't need to be orange pill to them. They're just pouring out drinks and we're yeah. someone's paying a tab at the end. That's it. Your father um, the bride picking up the tab, right? Mm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's right, right yeah. Um, and and, and, and also about... and also taking a lot of um, non QYC sats. I might have just yeah. mentioned that. <laughs> <laughs> well, somebody <is. laughs> it took us three or four meetups to sort of work that out. When someone yeah. pointed, that actually wasn't something we went in thinking about at all. Yeah, yeah. We're like, what do we do with the Bitcoin now? It's like, well, I guess we just hold it because that's yep. what you do. Like, yeah. <laughs> well, so you like should... hang on. <laughs> You should definitely keep that in a separate, separate. stash yeah, and yeah. then rub it people's faces in it in the long in years to come. Going, remember that time you paid me a car for yeah. a beer? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I think about um, Bitcoin Alive uh, accommodation. Oh yeah, because you overpaid. Yeah, well you, oh, you I went paid for, very uh, so, first, very early. So we went to Bitcoin Live as you mentioned. So saw Simon was Simon was very good at Bitcoin Live. Actually, we've met Simon before, but um, um, but we stayed in a, we had an Airbnb with a bunch of us, and so the rooms ranged from. It sounded wild. Yeah, it was so oh, right. It was so fun, good. but uh, the rooms ranged from yours, yeah. which was like I don't know where, where the Romans used to live, and mine, which was um <laughs> like the pull-out bed. <laughs> so, <laughs> but but which was oh, which was not great, but um, but um, but yeah, I pa- I you, paid over, one, over, of, you... one of the first people to pay when it was like half what it is now. I'm like, yeah, fuck yeah, I'll take the king. Yeah, <laughs> and then it just went. The price went. <laughs> <I'm> like, oh. <laughs> Oh, just incidentally, just uh, sorry to butt in with this, guys, but I just want to, we usually do like a, when we do just Brendo and iPods, we usually do a dick of the day. And today's dick of the day is Airbnb. Yes. Who, who have pinned us, pinned us for a, a, a was it like a, a towel rack holder? I think it was a toilet roll. Or whatever it was, anyway. Who, they say we broke. <laughs> we didn't break because we all checked the house on the way out and they've, they've pinned, they've, they've not, not dads for $400 to put a toilet roll holder back what? on it. Yeah. So, dick of the day, sorry to your children, um, is Airbnb. Yeah, and not not only that, but it took them to, what two or three weeks before they went back to that. Oh yeah, they'll have this happened. Four other people. And there's no in the way that that Airbnb didn't have people in there. But not a chance. And, not yeah. a chance. Anyway, sorry, that's a tool. Yeah, but we are. We're all going to split it. We're, we're not leaving Daz in the lurch. No, leave it. Leave it on Daz. Pretty, Daz, 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 is, Daz is rich. <laughs> no. <laughs> well, he is after my set. Yeah. True. True. Yeah. Yeah. Um. So, what is um like? Kind of Bitcoin, like how did you find? Do you do, well? I'm not trying to say You've, the, the Wellington one, right? You just decided we're going to do this. Um, and mm. how did you then advertise that you're going to do it? Did you just put something out on Twitter, or did you actually advertise? Yeah, it? we what started a Twitter account. Um, we'd connected with a few Bitcoiners over Telegram after we went to that Auckland meetup. Mm-hmm. Um, so there was a little Telegram group going for a while. Um, but in actual reality, most of them from Auckland didn't come down that first time, but. 
we we just we just connected through Bitcoin as over Twitter really. We did start we did have a meetup.com account that we started. And I think maybe at the first one or two, we did get a couple of attendees through there who turned up and and literally had no idea about Bitcoin at all. And they just showed up and were asking starter questions, which was pretty yeah, cool. cool, actually, anyway. Yeah. Um, but yeah, that was it, really. And we've now kind of just become connected with this community. So there's like there's probably a core group of about 20 that we're in fairly um, constant contact with around the country. Um, really good Bitcoin. It's also Rob, who um, spoke at... Bitcoin Alive as well, I think, from Queenstown. Um, and we yeah, we just started hanging out with them. And and these guys were pretty dedicated Bitcoiners and they had there were no meetups around that they could really find. So they they've been traveling for them. Like half our meetup is from elsewhere around the country. Um we, and well, they're really into it, eh? So we we're very nervous about whether anyone would shop for but Kiwi One. So we actually in part of the marketing off said we'll give away all the sats so the sats for that oh, one yeah. that we collected yeah, um, yeah. was two lots of two hundred and fifty thousand sats Ooh. each were given away to attendees wow. yeah we oh, actually yeah but key one cost us a bit just trying to trying to build a crowd yeah so how many how many of these have you actually done uh five so far five and yeah. do you have a like is there a goal like do you have a big pit or is it just fun and you're just rolling with it and seeing where it takes you well, we kind of, we plan and organize pretty carefully, but we're not really carefully organized on an end goal. Um, we just, uh, we're just concentrating on, like, we've got a bit of an ethos that just something new every time, something extra that we're doing. So we always sort of come out with ideas and working on it and just keep growing and just see where it goes, what ideas, like, stick. We tried a couple of things that didn't really and didn't continue those um, and the things that people enjoy and they want. Like, we've got a bit of a library um that we take so when we went on our journey and sort of orange pilled each other i got into buying books to learn about it as soon as i started to realize that there might actually be something to this bitcoin it's different and it's not just you know you get in thinking to make some money but it's just not what it is at all really in reality it's a mm. short-term use case so once i figured that out i was just wanted to learn more and more so we started buying a lot of books and um, we built quite a library and i read them all and passed them around amongst us um, and that's how we built a lot of knowledge and just talking to each other about what, what we were learning and reading and consuming. Um, and so we bring, you know, we've gathered this little collection of Bitcoin paraphernalia, really. Um, and so we can sort of take that to all the meetups and lay it out. And it's a great for conversation and newbies. You know, there was a guy at the last meetup, I think, sat there for about two hours just perusing material. Mm. There wasn't much of a talk. And uh, yep. that was sweet. We must have learned something. Yeah. Um, Brandon with his ATM machine. Yeah, yeah. And so you we get these some of these guys that we've sort of this community's developed into are really knowledgeable technical guys. And um so there's Brandon down in Dunedin, um, BTC Norris on Twitter. Oh if I can see the doxing too, maybe. Nice. Nah, and uh <laughs> <laughs> let me know if you need that beeped. Yeah. I have to go over a few <laughs> things here. Fine. That's all I think good. it'll be fine. Um he uh and he's he tinkers around with heaps of awesome stuff. So he built one of these lightning ATMs and he's brought that along to a couple of meetups. And so a couple of people have bought their first ever Bitcoin by putting notes and coins into this machine oh. and then scanning a QR just with Wallet of Satoshi. Um wow. that's and awesome. so like, even my mum did it. Yeah. My mum threw a 20 in it even at one at one meetup. Yeah. And uh so people bring along pretty awesome things. We've had we've got uh there's a guy who comes along who's a bit of a um a, a bit of a what is it, like a hardcore mining expert and he can just basically do anything and he's like a hands-on genius electrician of some sort. He brings along gadgets and things occasionally to have a bit of a look at. Right. Um yeah, and we've just sort of it's yeah, half of it's really this community of hardcore Bitcoiners. And then around the edges, we get people showing up wanting to learn about it a bit. Um so it creates a pretty good mix because they're also open to educating people and so it's a pretty cool sort of environment um yeah i don't know where that question started but that's where i ended with it yeah so um you mentioned your mum. like what's <laughs> what's the kind of orange pill story easy, with, easy carry. with your family yeah sorry i love mums <laughs> <laughs> sorry what was that but uh, have you orange pilled your families respectively Oh, I've try I'm trying. It's, it's in progress. I wouldn't say any of them uh orange pill completely. My actually my my sister's probably the furthest along and she I've set up a wallet with her and she's bought a little bit with her own money. Um, not just gifted by me and then lost like my dad. 
Um, <laughs> Thank it's, you uh, to uh, Mr. Hall. <laughs> <laughs> so, so, um, yeah, so she, well, it's funnily enough, she's, she's a bit of a, like, uh, an environmentalist lefty sort of bent to her. And yet I was straight off the bat, I was explaining to her the benefits for, you know, um, lower socioeconomic countries and, and people without access to banking and that. So I just went off the bat with that to her and she really like got that and understood it. And so she's, without having learned about it before, she's immediately gone in with that mindset. And so she's just bypassed that whole set of thud and is quite convinced about that. And so I don't know if anyone's ever mentioned anything to her, but I imagine if somebody was to bring her some of that thud, she would already be armed, like, hang on. But my mm -hmm. brother told me. Um, and so so she immediately saw that value in it. And then she understood about the scarcity and I was explaining the halving and these sorts of things um, and the cap supply and decentralization. And she pretty much got that. And so she made the decision, oh, well, can I just get a wallet? I'm just going to put a little bit in it and leave it there. Um, and so she's done that. Um, I my my mum and my dad really get different parts of it. In fact, I didn't really think my mum was getting that. And then I got her to come to Bit U one because I was worried about numbers. Numbers all padded out. By <laughs> <the next one. laughs> you know, mums are good for that sort of thing. And uh, um, and she showed up, and we, we were standing at a table, and somebody um, who didn't know it was my mother came over and just just a Bitcoin. I was just chatting, and he's just like, "Oh, so what? What? Um, what are you sort of into Bitcoin about? Blah blah blah." And she just started reeling stuff off the bat, like that I've told her. Wow. And she was just, oh, well, I think Bitcoin really interests me because I can't remember exactly what she was talking about now. I think it was, again, it was access to banking for um for for lower um for poorer countries. And I was just my my mouth hit the floor. I was just like, geez, some of this is rubbing in. So you're, you're, she you're proud it, moment. You know? Yeah, yeah. She's not like wanting to go out there and invest in it heavily, but she kind of gets it and she uh yeah, it's pretty good. And then my old man, he certainly got some aspects of it. He's not, I don't think he's really that convinced. He's quite skeptical about it becoming a sort of a unit of account, but he certainly understood proof of work, which is really cool to talk mm. to him about. Yeah. So when I started to talk to him about um, the mining of gold and the scarcity of that and how the gold, the level of gold increases like two to 4% a year sort of thing and how that's up and down and how Bitcoin scarcity compares to that and explaining about um, the, the ledger on the blockchain so that you can actually not, yeah, once he understood that you can't just easily counterfeit it like any other thing on a computer, um, and then that comparison with gold, he really got that 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 hard money requires work, um, and so he was he, he sort of understood that aspect. But I wouldn't call him orange pilled as such. Um, haven't really talked to my brother about it too much. Uh, my kids are certainly orange pilled, <laughs> young, they're loving it. Yeah, um, what, yeah, what about got you, them Dan? right into it. <clears throat> Sorry. What about you, Dan? Um, it's about three kids and a wife. Um, no, they're, they're into it. I mean, I was buying, they could see me buying for a few years. And so, you know, really my social media activity was all about Bitcoin. So they know all the memes and the big names. They have some fun. Um, and reading books with Paul, the, I read the little Bitcoin book. So I said to the kids, read this and I'll give you $100 cash. No, no. Yeah. Sorry, $100 worth of Bitcoin or 50 bucks cash and they you know just, just really encouraged the bitcoin and they obviously went for the bitcoin no, i think it was a hundred of either sorry and so they chose the bitcoin nice. um and i've been running a s19 in the house recently and so it's very real to them so no, they're, they're right into it, it would be right? they're not I sleeping said, at night right yeah. <laughs> well, I, said, I said to the wife before i left to come over here it's about a half an hour drive it's 9 30 here i said look just turn the mine off when you go to bed she says oh no no you just leave it on i'm like and I can see now it's still on. <laughs> it's, uh -huh. it's never been on this late. Yeah. <laughs> it's great. Um, with my parents and brothers, I actually I actually don't really attempt to orange pill anyone. I just um I'm right into it, but I don't really talk about it with others. <laughs> um yeah. So they know I'm into it, they know about but Kiwi, but I haven't attempted to sort of encourage any them onto it or anything like that. But both of those things are good in their own way, right? So you've got what you've got um one way which is like meeting the person where they are like talking about the things that are interesting you know either you go to the proof of work or you go to lower socioeconomic yes. people or or you can be the person that is the bitcoin guy and when they somebody finally decides oh maybe i need some bitcoin you're yes. the guy they go to right so both of those things are totally fine mm. it's just that mm. i mean i'm one i'm i'm one of these pushy try and orange peel people mm -hmm. guy 
Mm. But that's not necessarily what it has to be for everyone. In fact, it shouldn't be because that would be unbearable. Mm. Um, but I um, find that when, you know, when drinking with mates and it comes up and they sort of know you're on the edges, then you dive deep. And suddenly then I'm talking all about it. <laughs> you're right yeah. into it. But, you know, I won't generally open yeah. the topic. Yeah. It's amazing how you can bend every topic to get there, though, right? <laughs> oh, it's hard not to. Like, mm-hmm. and oh, my my yeah, my parents were just they got be got beyond it. I uh, I uh, stayed there for a little while last year, and uh, we'd talk, and every conversation with me would just end up there, and we'd be talking about we were talking about war, <laughs> and I hadn't really gone that far. With Had you him. brought up Hitler <laughs> yet, or not yet? <laughs> And I said, and then I just dropped in about, you know, <laughs> Bitcoin makes war unaffordable. And, yeah. uh, and then dad, my dad is just like, oh my God, for God's <laughs> sakes, it's not in everything. Like it's not, and I'm like, well, kind of, it's not a doubt. Like that. <laughs> like they just, and the word, then the end with my mom, um, the word Bitcoin come out. And she goes, oh, there's that word, that word again. And just yeah, it got beyond. So I did. I did make a conscious effort to try and tone it down with them. I just was giving it too much, you know. But it's so <laughs> hard not to get overexcited, though. Yeah, it's, especially and, if someone oh, kind of asks yeah. or talks about something that you go, yeah. "Well, well, let me tell you, let me tell you." But let's say you were massive <laughs> into um. Let's say you're massive into I don't know NRL, right? And you're just the guy that constantly talks about the NRL. Who's your team? Yeah. Do, do people? Yeah. Say again. Who's your teams? Who's your teams? Oh. I'm big in that real fan. I, I'm not. Uh, I'm a Raider, Raiders boy. Oh yeah, nice. Yeah, yeah. I, I'm not, mate. I'm. A, I'm. I, I watch any sport, but I'm a yeah Scottish football guy, so nobody's into, yeah. into what I'm into. What? Who's your team? Oh, this year it's the Warriors. Yeah, you was, oh. local. Okay, cool. Yeah, that's okay. weird. Well, you don't know. With Australians follow teams of the other side of the country. I don't understand that. Well, I follow the Canberra Raiders, and yeah. I've never lived there. Exactly. That's my point made, right? <laughs> yeah, that's, um, that's the thing. But um, yeah, but if like so, some, if somebody's really into NRL mm. and they just talk NRL all the time, is it exactly is this exactly the same thing as the person who talks Bitcoin all the time? Yeah, you just get to the point you're like, ah, mm. or, like or is it or is it something specific about Bitcoin? People are like, oh, well, I, so want, I don't really want to think about that because it's I don't want to think they're telling the truth. Have you seen that meme of the guy at the barbecue going, oh yeah, that's crazy, huh? Did you catch the game last night? <laughs> yeah, yeah, I see that one. Yeah, it's yeah, great. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, yeah. For some reason, in the general um, atmosphere, somebody doesn't know about Bitcoin, they'll readily accept the NRL guy, and they'll think the Bitcoin guy is a bit crazy. Yeah, definitely. Like that's that's generally how it'll go. And I've when I first got into it and a team I was in at work, I started talking about it a lot, and I got hassled incessantly. They were telling me I was in a cult. Um, <laughs> just, Maybe you are. Just, I heard that yesterday. <laughs> <laughs> you can't shut them up. <laughs> yeah. And, uh, but now that was a little while ago. Now the team I'm in now, I've sort of I keep mostly keep a lid on it, but they know they know like, and there is another Bitcoiner at work. He actually um, reports to me, and he knows, so we talk about it a lot. Um, and so I, I don't I talk to him about it a lot. I don't talk to many people about it, but it just it does bubble to the surface. So we a while back there was a team meeting where somebody asked me a question about Bitcoin, and so then I sort of started and. Then there was another question, then another question. Before you know it, it had been quite some time. And I was like, look, we've got to go back to work now. At at a team (laughs) meeting, somebody asked you about Bitcoin. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I I can't remember exactly how it came up. But then the team that reports to me started Can somebody ask me a question about Bitcoin? Yeah, yeah. They knew I was into it. And they they started, a few of them were curious about, they knew nothing about how it works and that. Um, So they were asking me about how the actual system works my what is mining like yeah. from a lot of the basics um and they just they were all quite curious and they just started firing questions and before i knew it i've been explaining bitcoin for 20 or 30 minutes um so is this instead of the safety briefing that you were possibly <laughs> doing or <laughs> no, i think we we had covered it wasn't the, any other business so it's technically legit i think yeah, yeah. <laughs> i mean the best, thing, the best thing about answering the questions is it kind of um calls out your own bullshit because you sort of think you understand something right but then it's oh, yes. explaining yeah. explaining it to somebody else yeah. really proves if you understand it to yourself mm, yeah. more first and foremost yeah. do you have the, you have the same experience yeah yeah definitely because that started early actually in our journey he did that to me first because i was trying to tell him look i've just been i was just scratching the surface i'm like man i've been reading about this bitcoin like this is really a thing like and he just goes oh can't, can't inland revenue just ban it 
And I was just sort of stumped quiet for a second. I was like, That was oh. early though. That's an understanding. Yeah, but this is really early, like really. And they I was do. like, Oh, I was like, maybe they can. And I just sort of left, exited that conversation. And then, uh, and then I think it was you actually looked into it from there. And the next time we talked, he's like, no, they can't, they can't actually stop this thing. Like, <laughs> and then it sort of continued from there. And then at that, yeah, that would happen all the time. That's a very early and basic example. But yeah, I'd run into that because at the beginning I was getting quite passionate, but I didn't really know enough to talk about it that much. And so, and I was, uh, I started mixing with a group of um, shit coiners and I was asking them sort of questions. And they, there was a couple of really anti Bitcoiners in there. And they were hammering it away, getting all technical with the shit coinery stuff. And I couldn't keep couldn't keep pace with that and couldn't couldn't answer the questions. And I didn't just have the really, you know, because a lot of the time in those sort of when you're challenged that way, the most simple arguments are the ones to go back to and just the basic decentralization and the really high level stuff. And it's like stop getting technical about how one of these chains works. Here's the basics, you know, no single person or small group of people controls this and that immediately changes everything. Mm. Um, and so, yeah, that sort of, yeah, so we did definitely go on that journey and got, I'll get, you'd get hit up with that sort of stuff all the time. Um, I still find it hard. I mean, I've been running a minor lately and I'm for, when people have now started to ask me about that and I, I don't really feel I can explain mining all that well. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, so oh, and that's that. something that is hard yeah. to be able to explain all the time. All right, that was our obligatory um, free Zoom buffer pause. Break. Yep, and while we were uh, paused and waiting, um, both Hats and I kind of came to the uh, realisation that you guys are essentially uh, us, two bit idiots. <laughs> we've got we've got Paul uh, who talks more. Sorry. And Dan, <laughs> who is clearly the most handsome. <laughs> I don't know which one I want. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Um, so, so, the, so the big question is, when's the podcast, boys? Yeah. Oh, geez. Oh, we threw ideas around, but um, oh, we actually one of our the crew that gets together runs a podcast that I go on quite regularly to try and satisfy my propensity to talk. <laughs> um, so Cody Ellingham runs the the transformation of value. Um, he started up a podcast in New Zealand, a, a good Bitcoin only one. Um, and that's pretty cool. Um, so I get a chance to go on there a bit. So scratch that itch that mm. way. Um, yeah, just got too much going on to do that as well at the moment. I mean, in all seriousness, it is really helpful to to have a, another person, whoever that other person is, just to, I mean, because if you're talking to people that really don't want to be listening, that gets it gets um, old quick. Um, but We've often... Have... Been... I say we've often talked about the advantage of having one or two others, how much easier it's made it otherwise on your own. Mm. I mean, we've had people come to our meetups thinking until they turned up there and spoken to others, they were the only one they knew. They were wondering if they were crazy because yeah. they were the only ones in their town that sort of yeah. they'd ever come across that was interested. So yeah, yeah, the, it's certainly been good being mm. at least three of us. Yeah. And we've got sort of pretty complementary skills at different things as well. Um, so when we're organizing, yeah, it is really like, I can't imagine what it would be like to organize these events as one person. Like it would oh, just be yeah. ridiculous. It's definitely an advantage having three of us sort of mucking in and, you know, we, we get, I'm from like an IT program and project background. So we get pretty anal with the old actions and tasks and make getting hey, us here's ready. Me. Here's me. <laughs> <laughs> so you're, you're laid back, Dan, are you? Pretty, pretty chill. Yeah, yeah. I'd like to think so. You definitely, yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. There we go. And I've got more laid back since getting into Bitcoin because you really can just you just sit back, relax, mm. and just wait. Yeah, that's it. That's it. Well, well, that's th those people. Like, who was it that said your sister? Like, um, like the people who have a bit of Bitcoin that aren't really paying attention and just know where it is. They're probably going to win. They're probably going to be the winners out of this thing because mm. no stress, just living life. Yeah. 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 Big, yeah, a few years down the line, go to check on it, and it's going to be worth a fortune. That's, that's yes. going to be quite good, right? Mm. Mm. Um, what was, it, was the other thing we we're going to say? Um, the uh, the elbow, oh. the elbow. <laughs> we got to talk about the elbow. Tell us oh, the story of the elbow. Wow, well, we. So we went to when we first got invited to that meetup in Auckland that we mentioned before. We um, we obviously made a bit of a weekend of it. 
and things got pretty messy into the night up in Auckland when we well we're off the three of us were off by ourselves and and then when we had our first meetup you know we sort of put so much effort and organization into it and then we had the meetup and then we naturally just let loose and uh, got pretty sloppy again and then it sort of developed into a habit and so <laughs> after Bit Kiwis one two and three the nights just got progressively <laughs> more ridiculous. And three was kind of the crowning moment when uh, I can't, I can't honestly can't recall a lot of it. Um, <laughs> but at some point I fell and just absolutely smashed my elbow in the middle of Wellington city. There must've been a crowd and uh, went back to the ho- hotel room. It was pissing out with blood and that. And, <laughs> oh, Jesus. and I'd, I'd lost these guys, didn't know where they were. We were just absolute messes. I couldn't even use my phone. It's ridiculous. And um, <laughs> and then I sort of crashed out in the hotel room that we'd booked. And then I wake up a quarter of an hour later to the sound of this guy just spewing his ring out in the toilets <laughs> in, the, <laughs> in the hotel room. He comes down. It's like, what the hell is all this blood? And there's just yeah. blood everywhere. Like, I was out at places I shouldn't have been. And I don't remember getting home, but I got home and I woke up in the morning and I just said, what the fuck happened here last night? There's blood everywhere. <laughs> it was a You in the bathroom floor and just, and I'm just like, man, this elbow, it's like, it was awful. Like it was all swollen up and it looked like it had a hole in it. It was just kind of. <laughs> How long and, ago was uh, that? So How long ago was that? No one. That was um, three months ago. Still was no one else in the New Zealand Bitcoin community's heard these stories. Oh yeah, <laughs> we're, we're going to get ripped about this. Huh? Um, yeah, and uh, so yeah, I, I I kind of ignored it. You know, I sort of mopped it up and put a plaster on it, and the, the wound <laughs> kind of healed after a little while, but the swelling wouldn't go down. And after about a month, I was like, I'm going to have to go to the doctor. Something's going on. It feels a bit off. And it looked off. Yeah, it didn't mm. look good. Eh? <laughs> and uh, yeah, she said, "I've got um, so so." You t- quite often people get like tennis elbow or whatever they call it, um, and builders and that get it from swinging the hammer. So it turns out you can also get it from a traumatic injury. Says the doctor, not just a thing. So I've done something in there, and so now I've just got to wear this compression. I've been wearing it for two months, and it's just taken forever. She tells me this is how long it takes, and I just got to keep wearing this damn thing. Well, while you were wearing it, no guitar. Yeah, yeah, and playing the guitar aggravates it. So it got me off that too. So it's been pretty, yeah, still going on. So I quite often say to the guys, Bit Kiwi 3 was the Bit Kiwi of shame for me, and I'm still wearing the sleeve of shame, as I call it. <laughs> <laughs> so <laughs> and, that, that's uh, in your right elbow. Are you, are you left-handed or right-handed? Right-handed, yeah. How's the wanking go? Oh, yeah, take you get a little bit more difficult, but you get there. <laughs> it comes and goes. All right, all right, cut that, cut that out, cut that out, cut that out, cut that out. <laughs> I, I won't unless you really want me to. <laughs> um, but so, like cows can't recover that, right? But so if you go, this is the, this is the thing about a meetup, right? People sort of people are sitting in their own little world, their own little cocoon on twitter or whatever they're doing reading books you don't go you don't get absolutely wasted whilst you're sitting there reading you know the latest mm. you know jeff booth do you that would just be mental <laughs> yeah, no, but when we... you actually go along and have some social experience i mean you don't have to lose an elbow but you, you can i actually have some social experiences it's fun right it's fun. more than anything else it's fun did we talk about and i'm not going to dox him but did we talk about um one of our friends um greening out at Bitcoin Live, did we talk about? Well, that? I don't know. We did. No, I no. don't think we did. We don't okay. won't mention the name. No, I won't mention the name. But but the similar. Sounds vein. interesting. So at Bitcoin Live, um, I don't know if it was the Saturday night or not. We had a few big, big nights, but one of the nights, somebody <clears throat> brought um, a couple of joints, right? So we're all sharing the joints and having beers and and brisket, cooking amazing meat as always. Um, and this particular fella. I don't think he was much of a smoker, and had he been drinking? Because that's oh, good he, we'd all been yeah, we'd all there. been drinking. He was, he was, <laughs> yeah, and that, yeah, that that was a, I think, a pretty traumatic experience for him. <laughs> it can be, it really can be. <laughs> yeah, that's the, uh, the after old, drinking, you got to be careful. Uh, spin, spin you out, can do. The um, let's go a little bit negative for a second. How is um? Like cost of living and things like that in New Zealand just now. Like talk yeah. us through that. Talk us through that if you can. 
Yeah, it's uh, it's not great, eh? The yeah, the inflation's been pretty bad, and and day to day stuff here, you notice it at with the food, eh? It's, where, where, um, where is it most noticeable? Is it like housing, rents, supermarket it's shopping? It's across the fuel? board. It, it, it's housing, food. Mm. Uh, it's really every every entity has had an opportunity to say due to supply shortages, COVID, and, and, and for some good reason, but no, no one's missed out on the opportunity to put up prices and we now just accept it. Yep. You mm. know, we just assume. Mm. <laughs> mm. So, no, it is, it's certainly, it's it's been felt by everyone. Uh, mm. and more so than for many many years mm-hmm. no like it's oh, this is the first time i've really started to maybe it coincides with pricing everything in sats that you don't want to spend mm. but i mean i first time in my working career like gee actually you're going to be a bit more careful than i've ever been it's you know we're, we're paying more for a number of products that are produced here cheese and the like than what you're paying in australia for those same products for reasons that are mm. yeah so no no, it's yeah. cost of living is very real. I always get shocked if I go somewhere that I haven't been for a little while, and you're just used to some level of pricing, but you haven't been there for six months or something, and it just slaps you in the face. And it's just, I had my kids the other day, and we had to we were driving back from over the wire wrapper, and they were sort of you know we, we'll get some takeaways, and they're like, oh, can you get some KFC? And I was like, no, that's going to cost the bundle. And I had a look on my phone and to get a, like a bucket meal for all of them would have been 50 bucks. And uh, so I was like, no, nah, no, nah, I'll just get, I'll just get you some fish and chips when we get up to the coast. I thought and that'll some be what? generally con- <laughs> some fish and chips, fish and chips, mate. <laughs> and uh, and, uh, and uh, I thought that'll be significantly cheaper because that's generally the, generally the way. And I was just completely thrown aback, like just a, a stock standard piece of fish is five bucks now. Um, you're not getting the fillets no no oh. I was just getting the old shitty shark or whatever it is <laughs> and uh, and uh and yeah it ended up at 43 bucks just for three little kids wow some fish and chips and that's I don't know what the comparative prices are over there but that's just outrageous compared to what it was not that long ago but um, I think and I all think, that kind of stuff yeah I yeah. think you guys are having it I mean it's not great over here either but I think you guys are probably having a, a little bit tougher than we are in that regard um but I just, I was more wondering whether, I mean, obviously people, you know, non-Bitcoiner people are are having that conversation about cost of living, cost of fuel, cost of food, whatever it is. Is, is any of that conversation coming into the, oh, maybe it's the money or is, are we not, are we not there yet? And no, nah, yeah. no, nah, nah. only for me and my circle. Yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah, okay. No, nah, they're just not. And yeah, I think, I think it'll come, but I wonder how much worse it has to get before it does come i mean i think some of it's being hidden at the moment like the government's trying to step in on these things and it is pretty old school weimar republic styles but you know they've they've subsidized all the um public transport there mm-hmm. they've made the, the government's cut their tax take on the fuel and they've got these and these are all uh, temporary measures that the governments can't really let go of now they want to get re-elected so they're trying to extend them and extend them and yeah, and so they, they're, they're cutting prices out like that, which all of our, the debasement of our dollar is paying for. Um, and so, yeah, I think for some people it's not quite hitting home yet. I think maybe they need no, those – these mortgage raises that's, that are coming I think are going to throw it a bit out of kilter because with the rate rises over here, there's like a ton of mortgages coming up for renewal in the next one to two years where their payments are just going to go through the roof. For someone yeah. who's not looking into it too hard – with what you read in the media and the like, you'd probably take a very long time to get towards maybe it's the money. I don't think you'd really, you'd have to discover that yourself. Well, yeah. it's it's a, is it not a lifetime of conditioning really anyway to expect mm. your dollar or expect prices to go up? So everyone remembers buying, you know, one and yeah. two lollies as a kid and then yeah. they become Prices five just cents up. That's and just then happens, yeah, it yeah. becomes 20 cents and that's just how it is. So it excel- when it accelerates, like at what point does it become so quick that then people go fuck fuck mm. fuck what, what is this because well, yeah. they're expecting it they like a lifetime of it they're expecting yeah. the prices to go up it's and, just... they're, and they're being told the situation's going to improve and yeah. you hear that yeah. message over if you and can over. just get to whenever it is right yeah 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 <laughs> our government released the annual budget today actually and i didn't really go into it in too much detail but i saw a couple of graphs in there that really cracked me up where they've got um inflation tracking up and then they're projecting it to just go hit the floor in the next two mm. years, like completely go. 
And I was still like, wow, that's quite optimistic. Well, I could see that happening. <laughs> sucking all the money up. People have got no money to spend discretionary. Um, once you've paid your rent so, yeah. and your food, you. But yeah, there's, there's nothing. Well, I've stopped buying big ticket items, apart from miners. But <laughs> <all right. laughs> tell us about that then. Tell let's go more positive. Tell us about the mining. Like what? What was the? You got you said um, you were an S nineteen. Yeah, yeah. I've got a swimming pool, and so I intend on next time some summer rolls around to be heating it through immersion mining. So oh, I've yeah. purchased because of the sound to just suppress the noise and the benefit of using the heat obviously but um so i just want to start collecting them over the next couple of months while i design the system so i yeah i purchased an uh s19 via a contact that simon put me in with via whatsapp it's brand new it works <laughs> well actually it did need to go back to bit main to be returned it did turn up with the loose screw in it and it turned up dead on arrival so that was, it was a traumatic start but um okay so in the interim, since it's cold here, I've decided with, without the system up and running outside, we'll just use it in the house. And that's what I've been doing. And I'm just acquiring the material to see what sort of box I can build to, to see what I can get the decibel rating down to, to see whether it's viable to have on all the time in the house. Mm -hmm. um, it's loud, but not as loud as I expected it would be. Yeah. Yeah. And are you so literally yeah, heating just... the pools? Sorry, go on. Sorry. Yeah, heating the pool is the ultimate goal in a few months' time, and then say I've I've got the I got the power supply installed so I can run six S19s. So I, I had the electrician come around and he said, "Well, yeah, actually, you're probably only one in ten houses that could do this. You've got an old central heating system which has got a direct power link, which isn't used for anything. You're not using the central heating, so we can just run it straight off there. So it's running different to the house, um, and I can have yeah, six okay. S19s at this stage. And so that that's the plan for summer." And then, yeah, and then uh, if I can get them up and running, um, the bank I've got a mortgage with, Westpac, offers five year up to forty thousand dollars interest free, no application fee, um, for something energy efficient, whether it be a car or solar panels. So I was gonna like line the the roof with solar panels. Um, nice. Yeah. So he's yeah, that's it. He's you. He's totally so so Brendo's done it the other way around. He's done the roof. Yeah. And he's yes. just I'm and just he's now... putting a battery. Yeah. Yeah. So. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, that's really funny. <laughs> Fuck your handsome Dan. <laughs> well, I said you were similar, not the same. <laughs> uh, I'm of Scottish descent as well. There you go. To, <laughs> everybody in New Zealand's of Scottish descent. We just basically went, went to the well. No, actually, you're probably a bit far north. It, it, Scottish people went to the far south, and you, like, where's the coldest yeah. bloody place we can find? And just like home, yeah, mm. Dunedin, yeah, Dunedin that's right? It. That's where they all are. Although you didn't yeah, want to that is where earlier because you were like, oh, it's too cold. I'm a bit soft these days. I've been, that, I've been here a while. It's not that fucking cold here. <laughs> it was like 14. I was freezing. Oh, my God. <laughs> <laughs> um, what, um, what, so what's the, I mean, you don't have a plan for the, 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 the meetup as, as itself, but like, how is it um, like uh, organically growing? Like are other people going off and doing their own little things from it or what's, yeah, I think there. yeah, definitely. Like people have connected with each other there and um and are now creating things together. Um and like heaps of cool Bitcoin relationships have built out of these meetups where they're now people who maybe hadn't met had are now collaborating on things um and getting together. Um yeah, it's really quite awesome to see actually. And now because we've met them from outside of the region, you know, we're talking to them in different cities to go and do it in their city. So we've built those little connections. Um, yeah, definitely, definitely has been an um, awesome little community seems to grow and people stay in contact and they talk and do things together. And it's it's really good, eh? It's really awesome. And there are some Bitcoiners who, yeah, like Dan was saying, literally the only one that they knew of in their town. Um, and so now they get to yeah. communicate with these other Bitcoiners and get out there. So it's awesome. That's, that's excellent. Mm. Um, wait, go on. Oh, I got nothing. I was going to ask for a, a shout out for the web. You got a website? No, we don't have a website. So we're running um, mainly, we run most of um, get our messages out in that via Twitter. We're also joined Nosta, yeah. uh, which is, uh, we just started in there. So we knew we're, we're Nosta rookies, but I'm just getting involved in that. Um, second try. Set up on the first time, lost my private key, had to start again. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> uh, so, yeah, that's really our only two channels at the moment. Oh, we're in a the, um, couple of Telegram groups with other Bitcoiners from around I, New Zealand. I've just got a couple of Kiwi mates and I was who 
of that you know that kind of classic they're a bitcoiner without knowing they're a bitcoiner um yeah so yeah they're everywhere um, aren't they yeah oh yeah them. yeah yeah increasing yeah. yeah 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 um i'd just love to send them your way that's all well yeah, we're about to new zealand are they um christchurch one of them and oh right. yeah. the other one yeah Christchurch is a great place for Bitcoin in New Zealand. There's a there's a cool little community down there, nicknamed the Honey Badgers. They meet and they have their own little regular meetup at the Khmer Restaurant uh, in Papua Nui that accepts Bitcoin. Um, there's a crew of them get together and I, they um they sort of talk to that restaurant owner and help them. I think he was using another system before or something. I may I may not get this right. And they sort of convinced them about the Lightning Network and got them involved with that um and they've yeah they they sort of get out there and talk to businesses i think there's a couple of other places a hairdresser and somewhere else in christchurch um oh and the chiropractor owns yeah. um who's come to our meetup he runs a chiropractor business and he accepts bitcoin there now and he showed up to yeah. our um our event in christchurch so christchurch is a great place <laughs> yeah there's a crew down there all of a sudden even just seeing the sticker going into a shop or a place and seeing the sticker you get if you, you get excited anytime you see it right Oh. I, mean, I see and I get like car registration. It's like, oh, that says SATs. Or that's, you know, like whatever. I see everywhere, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> but um, but when you go in, when you actually see something that's sort of official, somebody is accepting it, that is great. Yeah. Particularly when it's small, because it's like that's where you want it to be grassroots, right? And yes. um, that's where it's yeah. going to grow from. Um, that's the ones you can actually get doing it because yeah. you know, the owner you operator. To, but... Yeah, if you go to a chain or something, there's just all sorts of carry on. Um, but yeah, those those small owner operated businesses, that's that's where there's that's where they it's really beneficial for them, I feel, and the best people to be doing it. Definitely. Paul that Paul that we had on last one, I think his business was just a little bit big. So mm -hmm. what he was saying was it's all very well for him and his wife, having his wife are both Bitcoiners and they could they'd be quite happily accepting Bitcoin. But when you've also got a bunch of staff and it's only one person every, you know, five hundred customers wants to pay yes. in stats, yeah. you can't train all your staff to know what to do. So what his thing was, well, we need to get systems interoperable so that if yes. somebody wants to pay cash or sats, it can it can do mm. both so that the staff don't have to be trained in separate, which it totally makes sense as well yeah. for that size of a business. But yeah, you're right. Mm -hmm. The small owner operators can can do it because they're probably standing there. And they got their, you know, they got their yeah. wallet Satoshi or whatever is on their phone. Yes, yeah. yeah. Um, that's our experience. Anyone that we've come across generally, that's the situation that they find themselves in. It's good. So I think I probably have two for final questions, I guess. Um, my first one is you were a big book reader, Paul. You said that was yep. your first, that was where you went first. If you could give somebody uh, one recommendation, a, a, probably a beginner recommendation for somebody, where would you send them? I, my favorite the beginner. Yeah, my favorite from the beginner's recommendation is uh, now I I, do, I always have trouble pronouncing his name because it sounds like it's going to be something naughty. But is it Fanhome? Yeah, yeah. yeah okay, okay. I love uh, what's it called? Uh, Independence Reimagined. Bloody name of it. I'll say bullish case for Bitcoin. Oh, Sovereign, this, sovereignty through mathematics. One. Yes, that's yes. Oh. Sovereignty through mathematics. Yeah, that's my favorite first first try for a bitcoiner um the bitcoin standard i think for someone like that was my favorite first book out of the first group i read um and I, for some people i would like if my dad would listen to me and read one i'd probably give him that one that would be right up his alley um but for just your average anybody i'd say sovereignty through mathematics closely followed by um the bullish case for bitcoin and probably the little bitcoin Ooh. book um yeah well, they're the, sort of very the similar bitcoin. material but mm. yeah so we, uh, we got Daz and Seb um, have just released a book called Bees for Bitcoin. Which you're shilling before having read. I think it could be crap. Oh, I've seen that. Oh, yeah, I've seen that with the orange I'm joking, cover. Dad. I'm not ready. I'm not going to shell it until I read it. You bastard. <laughs> How dare you? It's um, it's, There's more and more coming out. It's good. He's sending you a free copy too, you prick. We'll see. I'll see when I'll see. I'll, I'll change my mind when it arrives. Hope he signs um, it. I'll do. I'll, we can do like a. What do you call this? YouTubers do like a live opening. A bo an unboxing. A unboxing. Yeah. There you go. Yeah, that'd be fun. Uh, <laughs> we'll not do that. Um, and I had two questions, and the ones disappeared. Um, oh, that's great. Awesome. Um, guys, give us a shout out to your Twitter handles. Give a shout out for the group. Where to let us know when the next one is. And and give us a date for the next one, just to send people somewhere that they might want to go. Yeah, so at BitKiwi one, the number one on on Twitter, um, and we've also on Nosta. We're um we've got the Nippo five address BitKiwi at Nosta dot nz. Um, 
Our next events are July 22nd, Wellington is Bit Kiwi 6. Um, October 28th, uh, Auckland, Bit Kiwi 7. And February 17th, um, Queenstown, Bit Kiwi 8. Um, yes, but we did also want to give a shout out. So another thing we didn't get a chance to mention was um, we'd been trying to buy a Bitcoin magazine. And to get that shipped here is ridiculous. You're, paying, you're looking at like 100 New Zealand bucks to get a copy here, total yes. price. Fuck. Um, and there was a Kiwi who works for Bitcoin Magazine we got in touch with, and he put us in touch with someone else, and we managed to arrange a bit of a bulk deal. And so we are actually, we started bringing that in for Kiwi Bitcoiners at the events and also ship them in, around the country. Um, and we now actually can ship them to Australia as well. Um, oh, nice. So we've had a couple of guys get in touch after we announced that. So if anyone's... Because I know it's actually hard to get in Australia and New Zealand, and it's, the shipping is ridiculous. The so it costs, yeah. costs more than the magazine. So yeah, I, yeah. I don't understand why that is. That's yeah, I, not they, sense. they're I shipping. Think... They're not sh- They're shipping from somewhere in Ohio, and they're quite heavy. And we, they wouldn't budge on shipping price when we spoke to them. He was just like, "This is just what it costs us. It's just is what it is." Wow. Um, it, I, it's yeah, it's just it's pretty ridiculous, but. When we get them sent here in bulk boxes, we can get a few over and, and make the price semi reasonable. And so we've been trying to help out the Bitcoiners that way a little bit. So if anyone's after a copy, we've got issues 27 and 28. Um, still a few copies of those around. Um, and you can contact us at Bitcoin Magazine at bitkiwi.co.nz um, or just fire us something on Twitter or Nosta. Um, and yeah, we can hook you up. So that we they were selling them for thirty six New Zealand dollars, cool. um, and then we're doing the best shipping we could get to Australia is fifteen New Zealand dollars. Oh, by the way, this is all in Bitcoin. We only accept Bitcoin, <laughs> so we'll give you a, a, a lightning invoice if you can. Um, Wonderful. And yeah, so fifteen dollars for the postage. But if you order three or more, it gets really cheap, and we can give you a, a cost for postage. So we did have a guy gathered a few Bitcoin mates together in Australia. And we sent them over 10 copies and that was pretty cheap. Um, so, yeah, if anyone's after a copy of Bitcoin Magazine, we are doing that. Uh, we've got a thin margin going to help try and run our events, basically. It um, doesn't. Yeah, <laughs> that doesn't. <laughs> we're just putting it out there. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, so shout out for that for sure. If anyone's keen, get in touch. Sure, no problem. Um, we'll have all I can't remember everything else you reeled out there if I don't know if I answered all the things. Um, if that's where you want some people to go, if there's anything else, feel free to ping it off to us. We will um, we'll, uh, put all the details below and all the shout outs to everybody you gave all the way through. That sounds like there's a, a really cool community that we're quite mm. keen to go to. That'd be mm. good. Yeah. You, have any, you had any internationals yet? Uh, yeah, we had um, <sighs> we had Liz who runs the meetup. Well, are and... we having any internationals? Oh, sorry, internationals attending? Yes. Oh, sorry. Yeah, well, we've only had, oh. um, we had Liz who runs Charlotte. Bitcoin meetup. She's on Twitter, babes who Bitcoin. Oh yeah. Um, she was traveling New Zealand and popped along. Um, yeah, we had um, it was a uh, Murdoch Media, the guy in Canada, but he came between meetups, so we could only go meet him. He couldn't actually attend, so that's a bit of a, yeah. But um, but no, that's about it. But we we're hoping to target that. A eh? like we we're trying to build up to Queenstown, and we we're, we're putting a lot of planning to that. We want to make it quite big. Um, we wouldn't mind getting some speakers and maybe a bit of a panel going there. We've been thinking about ways to get lightning interacting at that event. Um, so we sort of started testing the waters a little bit. We've been playing around with little POS systems on our own node and that sort of thing, working with some of the, the smart developers around here. Um, and we also, at the Christchurch Bit Kiwi, we had two speakers um, speak about Bitcoin there. We had, uh, well, we had Rob plan to do a, a what is money and he missed his flight. So we only ended up with one. Um, and he then, still drove five hours for dinner. Yeah, he still, wow. he still drove. He still drove. You couldn't miss it even then. Legend. <laughs> and uh, and then we had BTC Nautilus on Twitter. He uh, gave like a technical discussion on wallets um, and how they work um, for the Bitcoiners. And that was pretty awesome. So we're looking at trying to expand that sort of thing and sort of turn it into something bigger and something actually worth traveling to. Um, which would be pretty cool. BTC Sessions was mentioned he was wanted to come to New Zealand, so we were getting it all in on that. Tell him, yeah, mate, we'll maybe target Queenstown. It's well, a bit be careful. I think he's a bit of a hussy. He was talking about Bitcoin <laughs> Live last year. Uh, this oh, year really? Oh. Oh. He's like, oh, I wish I could make it, guys. Pressure's on, Ben. <laughs> <laughs> 
<laughs> yeah, so so yeah, so not too many, but we want that's what we want. We want to turn this into something big that really is awesome for the Bitcoiners in New Zealand to get together. Um and we're yeah. hoping the location of Queenstown helps with that to some extent. Sure. That'd sure. be great to sure. great to visit hats. I just want to say maybe maybe we'll get our people to talk to your people. I just want it to be the first there, but we're gonna be no not the first no, but anyway. <laughs> um the um no, that's that's really cool. I think with the with the with the events the more you can um, incorporate different things into it, the better. Like the firesides yeah. are great. The 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 philosophical chats they're good too. The presentations are good. But if you can have sort of in, interspersed with practical things that people can actually get their hands dirty, yeah, hands on stuff, that's kind of cool. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Even if it's you know somebody that's got their local produce that they sell for Bitcoin, that's fine too. Um, mm. But just like lots of different things, or you know, doing what you're doing with the beer, I think that's just fun. It's just fun, right? Mm. It's just yeah, makes yeah. It, like we're yeah. all. It's all great to learn, but it's. Um, but if you can make it fun as well, even all the better. Well, then it becomes very real for people who aren't already Bitcoiners. You know, they've yeah. actually seen it. Mm. I mean, I've given many a people at work download Wallet of Satoshi, I've sent you some sats, and they're all got that same amazed look on them. Oh, okay. I mean, then they get into well, you know, well, how do I redeem them? But yeah, you leave that for another day. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Tell yeah. them just a huddle. Yeah, you don't. You I just say I'm not telling you. Well, I just. <laughs> yeah. Brisk and I had a bit of a revelation late late at that night in um, Sydney was that yeah, we were exactly the same as you, but saying, you know, to hodl, hodl, hodl. But actually, if you show them immediately how they can spend them, like maybe it's a bit refill or maybe it's a, uh, a yeah, Bitcoin yeah, yeah. company or something. Yes. If if we then go into a massive bull run and then, then they realize, oh my God, I should have been a hodler. And then they do the whole yeah. process for themselves. Because <laughs> yeah. right? we've all had that experience, right? So it's maybe not that such a bad thing That's to help somebody. Point. Good to point. to spend so that they make a mistake and learn from it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Don't ever forget that <laughs> transaction. Exactly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. exactly, exactly. And you've also got the old the old silver lining, you know. Like I set my old man up with Wallace Satoshi, gave him a few sets on there. Then I saw him a while later, and I was talking about Bitcoin, of course. And I said, oh, "I'll show you. Get out your Wallace Satoshi." I gave him. He's like, "Oh, I've got a new phone now." I was oh. like, "Where's your Wallace Satoshi?" He's like, "I don't know." What? I was like, "Did you back yeah, it up?" Yeah. He's like, "I don't know." I was just like, and I sort of br briefly paused, and then I was like, you know what? Everybody else's Bitcoin just got a tense a bit more more scarce. So yeah. I thank you, and that was it. <laughs> thank you for your sacrifice. Yeah. That's lovely of you. <laughs> Appreciate that. Yeah. yeah. Um, All right, lads. Are we good? Awesome. Mate. Thank you very much for taking the time. Thank I realise it's late for you guys. So, um, thank you. Um, hopefully, we'll catch you in uh, in New Zealand at some stage. Or Bitcoin Live next year. Absolutely. Yeah, Thanks, guys. <laughs> yeah. Cheers, guys.